It's not up. Ziggy's not watching it, so it's not up. It's up in one minute. It's up in one minute. Ziggy's not watching it. It's up in one minute. It's up now! It's up now! It's up now! Pausing. Clicking. I'm clicking. I'm clicking. I'm clicking. It's loading. It is officially Heist, so the leak name was confirmed, so we knew it was called Heist. Well, we, you know, it had been leaked. PC servers. Okay, there it is. There it is. Pausing. Pausing. Getting volume. Pausing. Getting everything up to maximum quality. 1080p HD. Turning up volume to the max. Okay. All, all that's off. Okay. Here we go, boys. Thank you, everyone, for being on time. We have a lot to cover. The mark is in the rear of the dining hall. Cast, you're up first. You'll need to crack the lock and get us inside. What? Once we're in, Talina will use the vents to bypass patrol. Who's Talina? There's a steel barrier She's that blocks thick. access to the hall. Tebs, can you handle it? Wait, who are these people? Great. Then Isla just needs to bridge the gap. Building bridges. You can build bridges. What? There's enough in that bunker for all of us to live very comfortably. If we stick to the plan, Laser beams? we should have no trouble at all. Robot dogs! If we stick to the plan. Okay, soundtrack. What the hell is that? I guess that's a portal you go through? What is that mechanic? What was that mechanic? What is... To emphasize here, we're probably ruining the game with a sleep. Hi, I'm Chris Wilson from Grinding Gear Games. In this new league, you will plan and execute elaborate heists. <laughs> Travel to the Rogue Harbor and hire a crew of thieves to perform tasks such as lockpicking, demolition, and transportation. Break into a secure facility and be careful not to trigger the alarm. What is that ability? With floating swords, what is Bypass that? Bypass security measures and infiltrate the vault containing a valuable artifact. Make a mad dash back to the extraction point to lock in your hall. Okay. Use your cut of the profits to obtain a blueprint, uncover escape routes, and train your crew as you I plan the ultimate I job, executing a grand heist. Oh. A lot just happened just there. Choose your payoff from exclusive new items, such as alternate quality gems, trinkets, body and weapon enchantments, ultimate? replica unique items, experimented base types, and more. Plan your escape on September 18th. What does that mean, ultimate? Ultimate. Okay. Okay. I think I gotta watch the Ziggy D thing right now because I think he just finished watching it. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. There we go. All right. You can uh, D sub mode only chat now. Uh, unleash. Okay. The beasts. Nice. I want to go back and watch in slow motion, but when is the Q and A happening? Okay. What, what do you reckon? What's your uh? My chat. Tell me when. He, tell me when he's. Tell me when Z someone who's in Ziggy's chat. Tell me when the interview is happening. Because what I want to do is I want to go back and I want to have a look at the shit. I need. I need to go back. I, I want to go back and see what the fuck I was looking at. Uh, I want to see what the fuck I was looking at here. Okay. Um, Demolition and transportation. Uh. And now? Wait, he's now? Wait, he said, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Approximately 10 years of people have been asking for that. He's not doing it right now. Um, so he's not doing it right now. A look. I'll ask Chris about that whole thing. This chat, he's <laughs> literally just talking to dude. Dude. Chat. Stop. 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 Okay. Let me put. All right, dude. Fucking, yep. Yeah. That's good to me. This is the part of the Excel soundtrack. That way I don't get copyright striked. 
Uh, he just started to no. And infiltrate the vault. So he already knows all this. So he doesn't need to go through the video and look through like a spurg. I, I want to see what this is. Okay, so sell items. 510. So the earn of fraud sells for 510 points. And then what happens here? Huacanano. 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 Okay, so I need to watch this in slow motion. I need to watch this, like, okay, so let's watch this in slow motion, boys, because this is, uh, yeah. Okay, so... Reveal wing, one eye, 3,052 coins. And it shows you escape route. Display room, empty room. So wait, this is kind of like, um, wait, what is this kind of like? I see, so there's doors that you're going to have to break through. So like, you need to know, like, is this just an empty room? Because if you haven't, if you don't know, then how are you going to go into the, how are you going to use your resources efficiently to go into the correct rooms? So this tells you exactly how to get into the rooms. So he's explaining it right now. Okay, dude. Elaborate grand heist. There are 13. Okay, he's probably watching his own video. He's probably just watching his own video, which is probably released right now. This is, he's, probably, he's probably just pushed it live on his thing, right? I'm guessing. I can't, I can't start halfway through. Bro, am I getting cucked right now? I can't stop watching halfway through. I can't stop watching halfway through. No views! Wow, that's hot off the press. That's hot off the press. Okay, here we go. That's hot off the press. No views. <laughs> okay, here we go, boys. G'day, Ziggy D here. Crack your knuckles and whip out your black leather gloves because in Path of Exile September expansion, we're planning a heist. The mark is in the rear of the dining hall. Why should we grow our own loot when we can simply take someone else's instead? <laughs> In Heist, we'll travel to the unassumingly named Rogue Harbor to meet with some very reputable folk. Okay. I like that check. In the harbor, we'll She's be badass. playing Heist to procure valuable artifacts, reappropriate equipment for better uses, and liberate currency for exiles more needy. Of course, selfish people may try and stop us, so we'll just have to make sure that they don't notice us. We don't want them making a scene after all. And if they do, well, then we'll ask them politely. What is up with the loot on the ground? With our What's what are those goods? weird icons? What the... If we stick to the plan, we should have no trouble at all. What are those weird icons? If we stick to the plan. The Rogue Harbor in Heist acts as a new base of operations where we'll be able to sell off artifacts we're ewing from our heist, plan further heists, hire crew, and use intel to plan even more elaborate grand heists. There are 13 different rogues grand. that we'll get to meet in the Rogue Harbor, each with different expertise and skill sets suited to different heists and strategies. And Some of them focus splinters. on planning and arranging heists, while others can join us in the field. Field operatives have different skills such as lockpicking or demolition and they can gain experience from working with us on successful heists. We'll even be able to provide them with better equipment to help them help us. What? To begin with, we'll need heist contracts and markers, the currency of the underworld. These contracts and markers can be found out in the world from monsters throughout leveling and the end game, but they'll also be found or earned from the heist themselves. I got I got I got okay, so wait, what? Okay, contract, bunker, so it's a map. It's a map. Area level 80. So it has an area level on it. And then it has mods on it. And so you can just roll it, presumably. Lockpicking 1. Requires lockpicking level 1. And is there any special mods in there? No. Okay. Contracts like endgame maps can be crafted with modifiers to make them higher risk but higher reward. Yep. In addition to regular map modifiers, there will also be heist-specific mods. Unlike maps, however, contract heists can be accessed before endgame, bringing a mapping style of gameplay to lower-level characters, something players have been asking for GDE to trippy. experiment with. To embark on a heist, you'll take a contract to the Wayfarer in the Rogue Harbor. You'll also need some markers to pay for expenses and any rogues whose skills you may need to break into the facility. Once you get to the highest location, your objective will be to reach the secure vault and obtain the artifact within. 
As you move about, steal things, get noticed, or fight, you'll raise the alert level. What? If the alert level reaches max, you'll only have a short time to grab the artifact or you anything stealth, else you want bro. before the alarm is triggered and the lockdown begins. Wait, does that mean you can use, like, phase walk and just, like, run through? Like, what does that mean? Like, you can stealth? Like, if they don't see you, then are you good? So, at first, you may want to try to be a little bit stealthy. New patrol, formation, and enemy awareness mechanics will allow players to sneak past enemies without getting their attention. What the fuck? Your rogue companions will be able to help you fight a little bit, but their main job is to use their skills to help you break in and What about the experience? Make the experience? Everything that you take in a heist is considered contraband, and until you successfully make it out, they aren't really yours. Get taken out or fail to escape and you'll lose all of your stolen goods. Outside oh. of hardcore, this is the first time where oh. you might be able to lose something that you've picked up. That's good While for those little you'll only ever be cucks. dropping the contraband from the heist, it could well add a new feeling of risk and loss to- so That's what that weird fucking icon is. So dude, imagine getting a mirror. Imagine some softcore cuck getting a mirror, dude. I can't wait for this to happen. He gets a mirror and then he dies on softcore and then just loses the mirror. Failure. Imagine snatching that chase <laughs> unique, but being killed just before you escape only to lose it. It somehow seems more painful than never having the item drop in the first place. Even if you haven't yet triggered the alert, smashing the artifact case will naturally set off the alarms. And that's when you have to make your daring escape, as guards will flood in and try and stop you from leaving. It might be harder to get out than it was him? to oh, get in. Fuck. Successfully make it out though, and all the contraband you've pocketed will be yours. You'll also be able to fence the artifact in the harbour to try and make a market profit from the heist. Once in a <gasps> Oh shit, you can't log out of the fucking heists! You can't log out of the heists! If you can't die to the heists, that's pretty good. Like, maybe, but then what if your game crashes when you're in there? That's gonna be kind of shitty. Like, I hope the fucking client is stable for this shit. In a while, you may be able to obtain a blueprint to plan a grand heist, a potential big score. Intel gathered from regular heists can be used to reveal parts of the blueprint what? to uncover wings, vaults, and escape routes. Grand heists require more planning, more rogue companions, and are more expensive to undertake. Finding more intel for the blueprint will take time, but could potentially uncover easier escape routes or more rewarding targets you can hit while there. Grand heists have multiple wings that you must make your way through, each with their own alert level and challenges. Successfully get through all of the wings and you'll be able to break into the Grand Vault. Here, there will be multiple oh. rewards to choose from, but choose carefully, oh. as once you take one, the rest will be locked down and you'll have no choice but to escape. Meaningful decisions? Now, let's talk payment. The heist is all about the prizes you walk away with, right? The artifacts we're finding in heists are just a means to the end, fence them for markers to fund bigger heists. But it's the real loot we're after here, and it turns out there is a crazy amount Wait, 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 I need to get back. Heists. But it's the real loot we're after here. I saw this in the video, here. I wanted to read this. All sockets linked. Life modifiers have 6% increased effect. <laughs> That's just free six links with like free life. That's out, nuts. There is a crazy oh. amount of new stuff. Replica Iron Commander's Death Bow. Wait, what? So this is like a... <clears throat> Wait, replica? Wait, is this better? Is this a better version? What is what is a replica? Is that like mirrored? What does that mean? Upgraded? So you're saying you can get an upgraded unique? Definitely implicit? What's a normal implicit of a... What's a normal implicit? Holy shit. So you just get random... Off to find in heist. Rapture Rain. Flat fire damage with flat fire light. Oh my god. Look at that implicit on that bow, bro Look at that implicit on that fucking bow, bro. Holy shit. In the game's lore, there is only one copy of each unique item. They are unique. Because of their prized nature, experimenters have sought to create replicas of these legendary items with varying levels of success. Replica uniques are a new type of unique item that are based on the originals, but are a bit different. Take this Iron Commander knockoff that scales with strength rather than dexterity oh, what the and affects Strathmore even... Ballista rather than Siege Ballista. I didn't see Not that! Not only are replicas like this a bit of a twist on existing uniques, but they also potentially create new builds or ways of building characters around these items. Another example is this Replica Ambu's Charge, which gives significantly better endurance charge generation, but causes you to lose life rather than to regenerate it. Greater power than the original, but also a new drawback. 
Yeah, These two examples show shit. two I'm, ways that I'm these replica honest. uniques will differ from their originals, but there will be plenty more to see in the weeks to come since there are going to be around 100 new replica uniques to steal from wings it's in the It's not a bad starting ice. chest. Not a bad starting chest. The experimentation did not stop with the uniques though. Experimented base types are new item bases that provide much more specific and niche benefits to certain builds. Oh, trade like for example, so the bullshit. Solarine Bow that Jesus trades off Christ. physical damage for fire damage for elemental or ignite focused bow builds. There will be one new experimented base type for each weapon class and several new types of jewelry to find in the grand heists. Further experimentation has been done on <laughs> gems. <laughs> and in gem. heist you can find gems with alternate quality bonuses Around 900 gems with a twist, in fact. That's around one to three different variants per skill and support. Some what? of the new quality benefits will be niche changes for certain builds, and others might be quite a bit better than the normal quality bonus. 40% increase burning damage! Wait, there is even more weird stuff coming our way. In Grand Heists, we'll also be able to find weapons and body armor with brand new enchantments. Being enchantments, these don't Bro. take up the implicit slot and what? can exist alongside of them. Many of these focus around scaling modifiers on the items themselves, making for some powerful new potential. The top end power level of some of these is quite high, so some more do damage. have drawbacks, That's what it is. such as this mace that scales physical modifiers on the item, but greatly increases the attribute requirements. Who cares? These oh, items oh, oh, no. 600 strength, oh no, oh. And some others in Heist are using a new system more damage. being tested in the lead up to Path of Exile 2, where they are much more likely to drop with good affixes, sockets, and links, as if they were crafted a bunch of times with the best result being kept. So in addition to potentially being a powerful item base, it means that it's much more likely that they'll be usable or even good when you find them. That's sick. Of course, I like in that. addition to all of this, there will also be some new uniques to find in Heist, such as Corpse Walker, Boots that create corpses wherever you step. A true red carpet experience. <laughs> Another new unique will be Chains of Emancipation. A belt that curses you with temporal chains when you get hit, but generates rage when you get rid of the curse. But once again, wait, oh. that's not all, for there will be some other new things to loot and steal in Heist as well. For the first time since release, a new equipment slot has been added to Path of Exile in Heist. What? Fifty just found a drop for crud under dry heist. Twenty six degrees radiant heist. Thirty six degrees under dry heist. Chess. Heist chess. Ah, oh, it's this unique. It's it's a specific slot, so it's a trinket, but it's specific to heist shit. Heist trinkets. This dedicated slot allows you to specialize heist. in improving your heist rewards heist. in different uh, ways, such I as like trinkets. having additional divination card drops, converting regal orbs to exalted orbs when they drop, or making some items drop corrupted. Most of these modifiers are focused on what? changing loot in heists themselves, though some what? may extend beyond somewhat, such as the increased marker <laughs> drop from monsters that we see on one of these items here. As trinkets drop corrupted, they cannot be crafted, and finding a few good ones could prove an interesting what? way to focus on boosting different rewards. Obviously here with the theme of heisting loots, the loot had to be pretty interesting, so GGG has made a lot of new options in addition to the regular rewards the game tends to offer. The risk of losing contraband items alongside of the chance to select one of several items from Grand Heist means that the loot can be pushed to higher qualities than normal. It's good to mention as well that almost everything in Heist is tradable from contracts to markers to filled out blueprints, so there That's should good. be a lot That's of good. possibility to tailor your Heist experience to your tastes. Because you can also hoard markers and contracts, it'll be possible to engage with the League when you want to as well, without running into situations where you're forced to interrupt what you're currently doing. GGG like that. also like wants that. to note Agency. that they've made extra effort here to ensure that Heist works well in party play, which has taken a bit of a backseat in some recent leagues. Aside Fuck from the buddies. league itself, Heist also brings new additions and improvements to several skill categories. The first is Curses. With the addition of That's various bang, right? means of casting curses, there ended up being no real reasons to manually hand cast them. Without harming these other methods of cursing, GGG is interested in providing some valid reasons to cast a curse yourself. Firstly, now when you cast a curse directly, it will grow in intensity over time, providing some pretty tangible benefit to those curse cast speed oh. AOE and duration nodes on the tree. Various curses have been tweaked and improved overall, How does it affect and Bane? there will also How be it... several new gems that interact with curses, such as the <laughs> impending doom support. Look how slow this guy's clearing, dude. Look, look. 
<laughs> this new support gem causes cursed enemies to explode <laughs> when the supported curse ends, whether by monster death or otherwise. In the footage, for example, the player is actually overriding the supported curse with another curse to remove it, thus triggering the explosion. Ah, okay. Now, the category of steel skills, you know, lancing and shattering steel, were added all the way back in Betrayal, oh, bringing with, two with them Impale as a mechanic. Since then, while Impale has become very popular as a mechanic, the skills themselves see a bit less attention overall. Just they're fucking trash. In Heist, Lancing and Shattering Steel are being reworked, and two new Steel skills are being added to expand this Steel archetype. Oh. Steel skills will still Impale, but they now also benefit from a new Shard mechanic. Call of Steel is a new skill that is granted by all Steel skills for free as a bonus extra skill, and it allows you to conjure swords from the ground that burst into shards that follow you around. Shards work as bonus ammunition for steel skills, providing benefits depending on the skill itself. Yep, I'm probably shards playing this, Chad. Shards can also impale into enemies, and Call of Steel will burst these shards from the enemies as well, yeah. causing damage yeah. in the process. Yeah, I'm probably playing this. One of the new steel skills is Splitting Steel, which consumes a shard to fire a main projectile that explodes on impact into yeah. smaller projectiles, yeah. which can then generate further explosions. I'm probably playing this. Yeah, I'm probably Lancing yeah. Steel's rework allows it to use shards from Call of Steel to create a lingering turret to fire upon enemies, oh! lasting longer than more shards that are used. What? Is it follow the turret just follow you around? Or is it stationary? We'll also be seeing some spell reworks and new spells what focused around the idea of providing powerful effects when used alongside other abilities. They're aimed at helping players that have to stand still to do damage by providing powerful offensive and defensive boosts in a specific location. Flame Wall, for example, creates a wall of fire that deals damage over time to enemies that try to move through it, providing you some defense against approaching enemies. However, it also sets any projectiles fired by you and allies on fire, oh. causing them to deal extra fire damage and burn enemies. Projectile-based builds will be able to create a wall to both zone enemies and enhance projectiles they fire through, providing extra benefit to players. To make shit like this work, they need to completely rebalance the game because right now the class B meta is, just doesn't allow like you to play defensively like that. Like literally, if you're sitting there to build a wall to stop the monsters coming through and shit, it's like you just got a dog shit build and you need to just delete your character. Making good use of positioning. I like the idea of it though. I like the idea of it though. I think I've personally saved the best for last though. Void oh. Sphere is a literal black hole. Once placed, it begins sucking in oh, enemies, grouping instantly. them up and damaging them. Enemies that die near a Void <laughs> Sphere will be completely absorbed, leaving nothing behind. While it doesn't affect unique bosses for obvious reasons, it should provide some very powerful benefits in grouping up monsters, controlling an area on the map, and preventing monsters from leaving Wait, dangerous do corpses behind. Also, it looks super dope. Does it, it does damage to bosses, right? So you put down a stationary ball and just... I mean, that looks OP as fuck. And there's no corpses to explode? Oh my god. Like, no corpses? So no on-death effects. The second and there we have it for now. I hope you've enjoyed my first that look looks at OP. There's a ton of stuff for GGG to tease us with over the coming weeks, with hundreds of gems, enchantments, and replica uniques to show off. I'll be sure to update you with the best of the new league as I can. That's it for now. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching. Jesus Christ. Stop! You violated the law. Pay the court a fine or serve your sentence. Your stolen goods are now forfeit. What the fuck, dude? Oh shit, they fucking caught us. Okay. Um, okay. The steel rework looks badass. The, the steel, the steel. Re uh, re rework looks badass. The black hole thing looks badass. The firewall thing, I don't know. It looks cool, but it seems like, I mean, unless the burning buff is like, you know, um, unless the burning shit. Okay, wait, wait. Oh, shit. And you think Blink Arrow would be good? In okay, wait, wait. wait. The winds the crystals in the game? I don't want to miss it. Just let me know when the crystals in the game. We're going we're gonna to check the website. Uh, yeah. Last time you went steel skill, you unironically spent 200 X and bricked several new elder sets. Yeah. Cause that's cause I committed. Everyone else rerolled, and I committed. Cause I'm a little bitch, dude. I'm a little bitch. Do you understand? Yeah, that was back in. And to be fair, I know a lot more about PoE. Well, I mean, I knew a lot about PoE back then, but like I know even more now. All right, let's go to bythemixel.com.
Let's go to PeeWee.com. Uh, heist. Path of Exile Heist, uh, you will hire skilled thieves to help pull off risky heists, steal valuable artifacts, and fund your crew as you... Do you know what this reminded me of, chat? It reminded me of when uh, World of Warcraft uh, garrison missions. You know, mission tables, the way he was dragging the units in, and then, like, each unit was countering out one specific thing. It literally reminded me of World of Warcraft garrison mission. Which, I kind of saw that, and I was like, Okay! But then I also thought, well, it could be more like it could be more like a uh, darkest dungeon, and you know, you you know, you, you make you make specialized teams to do better in certain areas, right? Like I think, I think you know, hopefully it's gonna be like cool. I'm not a big heist guy. I'm not a big heist guy, chat. I will admit, like I'm not I'm not like oh fuck yeah, bro, I want to watch Ocean sixty nine, bro. Oh, I love heists. Um, I, I you know I think they're cool. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're cool, but I'm not, I'm not like, I'm not a huge heist guy. Our September expansion contains Heist Challenge League, uh, nine new skills and support gems. So we get 18 new gems, nine brand new ones. Which, wait, 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 okay. Revamps of curses, steel skills. So wait, nine new skills that doesn't count the steel reworks. That doesn't count the steel reworks. And some spells. Grand Heist offer new uh, rewards such as weapon and body armor enchantments, heist trickets, alternate gems. Wait, oh, oh, alternate. Oh, alternate. I thought he said ultimate. He says alternate quality gems. So you can get just different, slightly different buffs. And replica unique items. I feel like replica unique items, this could enable some completely busted builds. Like, uh, interview? Oh, inter interview is happening right now? I'm doing. What is this one doing? Ziggy's just staring there. Gain added cold damage. Wait, it's what? It's not happening. You're fucking debating me. Stop debating me, you little bitch. Stop debating. Just fucking fuck off. Okay. Uncover the, the rogue harbor. Buy your passage to the rogue harbor where you'll consort with the crew. Wait, did you get a picture with this one? No. Uh, where you can consort with a crew of thieves who offer nefarious services. Thir wait, 13 rogues? 13 rogues. Oh, wow. So you can get like a specialized team. So it's not like everyone just gets the same three dudes. You can make the actual squad. What the fuck? Okay. 13 rogues can be contracted to assist you with uh, setting up or executing a heist by filling roles such as transportation, lockpicking, and demolition. Okay. Get this area. He's got a monocle. <laughs> What's that? Like some three pots next to his cock there? Okay, pretty. This guy's pretty poggers. This, guy, this guy's pretty badass. Oh, yes. Well, hello there. Do you want some of my blue solution? Maybe some green? She looks more badass, I think. She, she looks more badass. Like with the weird like glasses and shit. She looks like a, like a gnome. Hi, our specials. In order to execute a heist, you will need to know uh, the location of a valuable artifact and what uh, defenses safeguard it. Contracts just containing uh, these clues can be found throughout Ray Class alongside coins with the mysterious emblem of the rogue. Uh, the mysterious emblem of the rogue harbor. This reminds me of that Game of Thrones. You know, you know that the, the fucking the faceless men. You get like this, the bra the coin of Bravos or whatever, and you could like trade a coin for like killing some cunt. Chris on, I swear to God, if he's not on right now. He's literally Ziggy G's fucking chair, bro. It's a little, you've just told me to click on it, and it's just literally Ziggy G's chair. Wait, what is he, what's on there? You have perfect agony? If you've dealt the critical strike chance recently? That's actually pretty fucking nuts. That's actually pretty fucking nuts. For builds that can't get the perfect agony for free, that's tight. Although, I wonder how expensive that will be. That'd be pretty, yeah, that'd be pretty, that'd be pretty nuts. Right, dude, stop, just stop. I'm closing my own one down. Um, travel there and turn these objects, uh, tra travel there and turn in these objects to hire the expertise you need for your heist. Okay. Was that okay? There's a waifu breaking in. I'm getting that waifu, man. I'm getting that lockpicking waifu for sure. That's 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 gonna be my main. That's gonna be my main bitch right there. 
Let's go. Fuck. Oh, wait, is she an explosive expert? I thought she was like a ninja. Like a lockpicking ninja. Rogue's marker. Uh, creates a portal to the Rogue Harbor from a town or a hideout used as a currency for uh, services in the Rogue Harbor. So it's a portal and it's a currency. It's a portal and it's a currency. Missing interview? Yo, shut the fuck up. You can a mod just tell me? She's 12. She's not 12, chat. I don't need to get proof. There's no way she is 12. Then again, 12 year olds do make good thieves because they're small and they can fit into like, 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 you know, uh, like air vents and shit, right? Like, there's good thieves. Like, kids make good thieves. Contract bunker. Literally t uh, turns water to leith that makes my complete. Okay. So these are the different contracts. Earn a fraud. The Freudian can earn burial in the sky. They have other ways of keeping the dead. Wait, what the fuck? It's just an urn with dead people in it. Incense of Keith. Sap the Otori tree, known only to grow at the meeting point of the seven waters. Nothing since its disappearance has smelled as wondrous. Okay. Okay. The, the, these are items. Missing interview. Yeah, it's Keith, dude. It's, it's, it's the, the urn of Keith, bro. What's up? If you can't escape the heist, you will lose everything you stole while infiltrating the facility. So that means if you log out, unless there's portals, maybe you get portals. Or if you die, or if you fail the whatever parameters there are set, like, I don't know, there's a bar you have to stand or what the fuck is the deal. That's kind of nuts. Only one portal? We don't know if there's only one portal, bitch. And if you actually started, I swear to fucking God. Chat, just shut the fuck up. Can you please just shut the fuck up? That'd be great if you could just shut the fuck up. You'll need uh, to support your rogue while they bypass the security in order to reach the vault. Wait, your rogue. You can get more than one guy in your team, right? You can have like a, you get like a squad, right? Be careful with how much uh, commotion you cause or you may trigger the alarm causing the facility to be locked down. When this happens, it's time to run. Oh, so you can't kill too many guys and steal too much shit before getting the main prize. Otherwise, it gets locked down and you get cucked. So I see, I see, I see. I don't, it's weird to think that you could want to stealth in this game. And if you're starting now. Oh, shit! Yeah, no, I don't think we can hear you at the moment. Let me, uh, let me fiddle with my audio settings, see if that fixes it. Ziggy. Ziggy, focus oh, up. I hear something. Hey, can you hear me? Oh, yes, we have you. Loud and clear. Good morning, Chris. Hey, how are you going? Welcome. Uh, great. Yes, I had a lot of fun checking out the harvest action over the past couple of days and uh, making my little videos and stuff like that. And uh, lots of excited reactions today. Um, I uh, actually wanted to ask you, so all the way back when we even originally uh revealed harvest you were like already hyping this league <laughs> like revealed yeah. day for harvest i was talking to you and you were like hi hyping this league uh why in particular were you personally more excited for this one? Oh, is he a heist guy heist has been really fun to work on um right from the beginning because it's so evocative like you say the word heist and immediately the development team knows what they're making like it's it was hard to get them to focus entirely on finishing harvest when there's all this cool <laughs> heist stuff going on in the background you know people are wanting to make vault doors and a cast of characters and that kind of stuff Oh so my right God. since we knew we were doing this, it was kind of <laughs> no the more so interesting one to us thematically, if you see what I mean. <laughs> yeah, I get you. It's like when you already have a, a new project and you're like, <laughs> I don't want to work on old thing that I already know. It's like, <laughs> I have a much more exciting new thing to work on. <laughs> so yeah, and it's uh, definitely, I remember Beck saying that she didn't want to... Uh, she didn't want to reveal the, like, the name or even tease the name too much because if people figured it out, it would be pretty clear as to what would be happening with the actual league yeah we had to be careful with that one because at least with harvest if someone works out the theme they don't know what form gardening is going to take in path of exile but with heist you know obviously you're going to go on heists assemble a team work out some plans steal some cool stuff and so we had to be really careful with the teasing to just tease nothing and see what people would draw out of the nothing and it's kind of hilarious today seeing the feedback so but you said it was about boats and it's like <laughs> well, I mean, we use the word friendship which i guess says ship in there but that's referring to the rogues that you get to befriend 
<laughs> so I was looking at, after I found out what it was about a couple days ago, I was looking at a lot of Pixel's teasers and they were all very creepy, cryptic like that, but they were all actually true. Things like ships and stuff like that and ocean. And I'm like, oh, ocean, ocean's 11. <laughs> I suspect, <laughs> I, dude. I suspect this is one of the things where once they randomly work out it's to do with boats she makes sure to not roll that out in anything she says while still not actually saying it is if you see what i mean <laughs> she is she's the master of this yep. uh, the master of deception the master debater indeed the master debater Sorry about the borks in the background. Doug's a little bit excited this morning. Um, so you had a, another round of lockdowns recently, and we know that that impacted your uh, making of Harvest. Uh, how much? How bad has that been this time around, or have you guys managed pretty well this time around? We had gone. pretty much three He's weeks young. at home, and um, it was it had the same productivity hit that we saw the first time, Wait, what? and that was kind of bad timing for it. But we should be okay. We have enough time to get stuff ready by release, what? hopefully. And um, it mostly meant that things were a bit tricky with getting the final stuff ready in time for the press tour. But thankfully, everything came together at the last minute so we're really pleased with what we've shown off there yeah it looks uh it looks like certainly a step up in like complexity and the amount of stuff that you would have had to have made like there's a lot of new characters here new locations new like ui systems and stuff Care like that how, how like much more work was this compared to something like harvest Oh, it's a lot of work. I mean, having all the different characters and the fancy different things you can do inside the heists is a ton of content that we had to make there. Something like Harvest is more about the rules of how fun the garden is to grow, whereas heists can just be enjoying the different <laughs> types of heists and cool things that occur in them and trying to work out what rewards you're stealing. And it, it feels pretty streamlined when you're playing because there's quite a lot of cool stuff that's kind of happening around <laughs> you, if you know what I mean, in terms of guys like, you know, welding their way through doors and climbing through vents and that kind of stuff. And we've taken a lot of pains to make sure that that stuff um, kind of feels like you're playing through a heist movie. Like you don't have to micromanage your rogues. You're basically just, you know, playing through and watching them get past the obstacles as you're dealing with killing all the masses of guards that come out. Yeah, I, I okay. like in the trailer. Sounds kind of like coming in through the vents and stuff like that, and like tumbling through the trip wires. How much of that like stuff's it. like actually in it? Like, is that actually in there, or is it just in like there trailer stuff? stuff? All of that stuff is stuff that you actually get to see in the game. I mean, I'm pretty sure that the only the only stuff that we handmade for the trailer was, you know, the character pointing at direct parts of the actual heist plan that's on the table. But you get to go to that meeting room, you get to have all of your rogues do all of the actions in there, you know, disarming lasers and that kind of stuff. Yeah, right, gotcha. Um, so speaking of, like, stealing things, you've got this loot contraband system where uh, once you pick up an <laughs> item, an it's not less. technically yours yet until you actually make it out. Generally, people don't like to lose things once they have them. So uh, tell me a little bit about the design process of this, like, concept of pseudo-hardcore looting that we'll see oh. last. There's a number of factors there. In every league, we try to have something different that happens with combat. And the thing that's different with the combat itself here is the fact that you're working towards getting a reward that you have already selected. So halfway through, you get to say, I'm going to get this thing. And then if you complete it successfully, you will get that thing. And you get to tantalizingly hold it in your inventory in the meantime. Now, it's clearly marked as contraband, so you know this is an item you haven't locked in yet. Okay. And um, generally speaking, if you're careful, then you're able to get the item out. And this is mostly where the alert level management kind of stuff comes in, right? It's not about being stealthy getting in so much, right? You can kill you can kill guys, you can get items, right? There's very little actual stealth elements that practically matter there. Uh, of course, if you want to roleplay, you can totally hide from guys. The okay. important part of all of this is making sure you manage the risk level for getting stuff out. Now, the subtlety to it. The number of rooms that you open with rewards in will be a lot more avenues for guards to pour out of when you're trying to escape. So if you actually are looking for something, you look if you're looking to get out alive with something that's very valuable, you want to be careful to not leave too much mess as you go in because then there's less mess on the way out. And so you'll often find that if you get something incredibly valuable and you want to make sure you escape with it intact, you just have to be a lot more careful than usual escaping as opposed to a lot more, you know, as opposed to playing into the stealth mechanics on the way in. So it will be pretty possible to play a go loud play style for people who don't really want to stealth. Because I know some people were really excited for it, but there were a few people concerned in the chat about like the we idea that they were forced yeah. to. We definitely do not want to make a league that fit, that that works against the concept of you know playing Path of Exile by killing monsters and finding items. And so while the alert level does escalate as you do those actions, it's mostly a matter of choosing how many reward rooms you voluntarily go into on the way in. Because if you greedily try to get everything and like full yeah, clear the rewards, everything. that's going to create quite a lot of noise. Now there are ways to build around that. Of course, you can get equipment for your rogues, and if you give them stuff that suppresses alert level, you can of course therefore steal more stuff. Fuck yeah! But you needn't Fuck worry yeah. too much about actual interactions with monsters in combat. I'm I mean, sure, it marginally increases the alert level, but we definitely want to go in all, gun, all guns blazing as a completely valid playstyle. 
What? So a few people asked about minions, like will they like run off and aggro things and stuff like that, but you said the actual combat itself doesn't do too much to the other level. So they do um, aggro monsters as normal, right? Like if you're trying to hide from a patrol and you want to hide behind a statue, then having 50 minions run around is definitely a problem. Um, having said that, there are a couple of things here. For a start, like we fully use necro characters in our playtesting, right? It's completely normal for you to have minions in there as long as you're smart about it. And secondly, if you want to kind of roleplay a stealth character that does enjoy hiding from the guards and trying to get through with a minimal amount of disruption, which can be a lot of fun, then you probably aren't picking a necromancer in the first place for that particular role. The role-playing... Yeah, Cucks right, get out. got you. Happy Cucks, um, get out. So this kind of like introduces like an alternate style of mapping that you can even access a little bit earlier in the game. And you once said that saying. once you uh, get players to maps, you effectively own their souls. <laughs> so yep. uh, would you be able to break down at all why getting players to maps is like so successful at actually getting them to keep playing the game, retaining them? There's something really rewarding about Path of Exile's mapping endgame to do with the kind of there's a couple of things here. For a start, it's itemized, and that means that you get all the benefits of being able to craft maps and kind of control your experience there. And Good it comes with every map here, involves putting something out, like there's a stake, and... as it were. You're wagering the value of the map against your ability to get the rewards out. Um, in addition, because maps vary so much in terms of their layouts and what monsters you get and what random encounters you have, there's so many axes of randomness there that it really makes it feel like a unique experience every time. So. A lot of people describe Path of Exile's campaign as the tutorial, where maps is the actual endgame. True. And so um, we've kind of embraced the fact that mapping is where the player retention really kicks in. Like, once someone gets to maps, they're going to be playing a lot that league. There are a number of players who abandon at various different places throughout the uh, campaign. You know, people will play, I guess with free-to-play games, you'll see like 50% of people bail out before you get to Brutus, for example. You know, there's a, a huge number of people who quit in the very first area when they realize Path of Exile is not League of Legends or something. And so... Um, as as you get to maps, the kind of drop-off curve of people abandoning the game due to it not being what they wanted completely uh, gets eliminated, and once people hit maps, there's a huge burst of retention as they play through a lot of the Atlas content. So then do you think having like an earlier introduction <laughs> to a mapping style system might potentially have an impact, or is that something you're like looking to experiment with here? It's certainly an experiment. For a long time, people have been asking for some way of doing maps during the campaign, and we didn't want to just throw endgame maps in, you know, stick a map device in Act 1 or anything. But Heist gives us a unique opportunity to have a lot of map-like experience that's going on in the core game. And so as you're playing through, you get to basically... I mean, it's, it's not maps, of course, but it is craftable areas that you can trade that represent an encounter, in this case involving heists. And so we get a lot of feedback about how a player is going to handle this. Like, is this going to increase retention in the core game? Is it going to distract people? Um, are new players going to handle it well? There's a lot of questions there which should be answered. And that's important information leading up to Path of Exile 2 when we're trying to work out the role of maps in the global Path of Exile picture. Does this also effectively act as a bit of a tutorialization for mapping, since you can introduce like crafting of maps and stuff like that earlier on? Completely passively, yes. Like, indirectly, you'll learn about how maps work, but we're not in any way saying to people, okay, this is this is early maps, here's what to do. We're basically saying, these are heists, go steal some items. And if people happen to learn about maps in the process, that's great. True. Awesome. Um, awesome basic some questions, of the Ziggy. Leagues, Come on. Uh, awesome that we've seen in the past are, like, very heavily tied to the endgame mapping system. Uh, like, for example, Delirium, while others are much more separate, like, do of this kind of separate endgame. Uh, Heist appears to be one of those that's a bit more separate overall. So what goes into the decision whether you make a league that way, more separate or more linked to the actual endgame mapping system that already exists? A lot of it comes down to what we're trying to achieve with the content, right? With Heist, we need to have an elaborate structure that you infiltrate and then steal stuff out of. And burying that in the middle of an existing map um, has significant technical problems. By breaking it out into a thing that you you find your contract slash markers in the maps that you're playing, and then you go and do them, it both um, means we can have much, much more compelling and technically advanced encounters. And it also gives the player freedom to not have to do it right at that moment. Like, you all know the feeling of encountering Zana and then kind of feeling an obligation to run her mission because it's a run free it. one that you'd otherwise not be able to do. You gotta run it. We wouldn't want that in every single area with the heist encounter where you have to spend some time uh, breaking into a facility and stealing stuff. And so here you can just accumulate the contracts and do it whenever you feel like it. It's like the flexibility you experience with Delve, but without a sulfite cap. Yeah, fuck yeah. Yeah, I was fuck pretty yeah. excited to see that you can effectively hoard these contracts fuck and yeah. blueprints and things like that uh, endlessly because, yeah, that's something I'm definitely noticing more I like and more that shit. the time is that get greats on me a little bit that you are uh, got things like your incursions and stuff like that. It's like, I really like the incursions. I just kind of want to do them when I want to do them. <laughs> Whereas I feel like I have to do them now or I'm going to be Fucking missing out on trash. Uh, incursions and stuff like that if I Literal do that on trash. my temple now. So uh, I'm glad that this is uh, effectively 
uh, avoiding that a little bit more. Another kind of like part of this is that uh, idea of tradability. And in some ways I like things, uh, certain things not being tradable. For example, Harvest Crafts not being directly tradable, I think has like a, some interesting benefits. What uh, in, in this league, it seems everything is very tradable. Uh, what goes into the decision whether you to make something tradable versus not being everything tradable? Everything just should be tradable. Basically, if it's an item, it's tradable. And we like to itemize stuff because it means it's something that you can trade with other people. It's something that you can craft. Like we could have had it that you accumulate heists in the same way you accumulate incursions. And the grand heists are just like a temple thing that's sitting on your account. But this was a great opportunity to say, well, what if that was all tradable from the start? What if you could have had a Temple of Atsuwadal that you put together and then traded with another player so there's a person who can fulfill the role of making good temples? And that's something we essentially get to do here. You can sit there setting up grand heists, revealing all the information and trading them to other people without ever running them yourself if you would rather do that. And likewise, someone can uh, trade for a grand heist, fill in the reveals on it, and then trade it to someone else for a profit, or just trade for grand heists and cock, run them dude. without ever actually doing the reveals themselves, depending on what they personally enjoy doing the most. What? Will it be possible <laughs> here, uh, trading aside, will it be possible here to kind of like chain this content almost exclusively? Like, nah. uh, because nah. you're able to get contracts from contracts, I understand, right? Nah. Um, Mark, can you find contracts in contracts? <clears throat> uh, and right now, I will. Yeah. Right, we're, we're discussing that internally. Nah. It, it does matter for things like this, because while we do want the content to be chainable via trade, like if someone wants to live in heists, they can totally do so. We want to make sure that it isn't something that you necessarily perfectly self-sustain forever without touching the main game. There'll be no so way. So that's being discussed. And as you'll see from previous content like Delve, we do want people to actually play the main game at least a little bit still. So yeah. um, I expect some trade will be needed if you want to indefinitely play in heist content. Imagine if Delve was Mark infinite. In <laughs> I've got a whole team supporting me here for the stuff I don't know. Holy oh, shit. Awesome. <laughs> cool. I'm sure chat will get into some nitty gritty stuff in a bit that you might need them yep. to ask. Right there, um, yeah. So obviously tradability will mean that you'll be able to chain that stuff a bit more potentially. It's dog. I'm going to give my doggo some pats simultaneously here. <laughs> you'll uh, be able to like trade to if you want to chain this sort of content more. But uh, sometimes progression through higher tiers of atlas unlocks like more content and stuff like that especially when these league mechanics are tied more closely to the atlas because that's not the case here is there any like kind of direct correlation between atlas progression versus uh your pious cool. progression or is it completely separate uh there's no direct relationship that i'm aware of there basically as you play through maps you're going to find more and more um more and more markers and so on, of course, on the high level maps. And so a little bit like Delve, you want to be playing the best maps you can. But in this case, you can essentially find sulfite in the mine, as it were, because as you complete the heists, you'll get more and more markers to fund more heists. And so it does mean that people don't necessarily have to push the Atlas as much as they normally would do. But having said that, the Atlas is a rewarding mechanic that gives access to a lot of other items that you're not necessarily going to be able to steal on the heist. So I suspect players are probably going to want to put, push both. Awesome. Uh, some items are, are some items tied to specific contracts? Like, where you know a little bit, like, oh, I want to target farm this contract, so I might trade for it or, you know, hoard those and really focus on those? Yeah, there's some light Yo. associations between contract types and the types of chests that you're going to find in those tile sets. And there's some strong associations with the grand heists to do with what kind of rewards at the end of the wings. Now, we're going to let people work that out as they're playing rather than list it all on a spreadsheet. But yeah, they'll they'll learn that there's certain types that are better for certain rewards than others. Don't worry, we'll list it all on spreadsheet. Did he just say that the highest could be, what well, the atlas could be sometimes <laughs> more beneficial? If to go by, there'll be plenty of spreadsheets. Yeah. We just don't want to have the situation where then people the are league mechanic contracts before they've even run the first one because someone on Reddit theorycrafted that it's got a slightly yeah. worse reward outcome than the other one or whatever, even though it ended up being wrong. Yeah, it's a nice least. Uh, it's least did. nice to have that little initial he period did, which is at the leak size. It's kind of it? scary, dude. Um, uh, right? Yeah, no, that's good. You answered like, all my questions still gonna be good in regards to that. Uh, a lot of people have been asking about group play, and I mentioned in uh, from my previous discussions with you that this seems a bit more group play friendly. Would you be able to go into that at all? Because uh, I know it's been a bit of a mixed bag. Like last league was not great for playing co-op with Amy. Yeah. So philosophically, we design the league and then some of them better for group play than others. And if we made it so that every league was perfect for Fuck group play, it. we would have a lot less cool stuff that we could do. So it's going to vary from Path of Exile release to Path of Exile release. Having said that, in Heist, there's a lot of stuff you can do, right? So everyone's accumulating their intelligence for unlocking stuff when they do Heists. And this means that if you have a blueprint you want to work on with your group and you want to unlock all of the stuff, 
then you can share that intelligence by like, I'll unlock this wing, I'm out of intelligence now, pass it to my friend. He unlocks some reward rooms or some escape routes, passes it around until everything's unlocked. And then you mm. can play it together. And it also, there's various benefits of being in the area at the same time. For example, if I die and drop a pile of contraband, if I was alone, that's lost. Whereas if Aww. you're there, you can scoop it up and give me select parts that you tell me that you remember to bring out and keep the rest. That's some bullshit! <laughs> Um, the way that the rogues work in combat, to emphasize here, this is not an escort quest. The rogues are not something you have to protect with your absolute life or you fail the mission. The rogues kind of autonomously do their own thing, and that means that they can't die. And so what does happen, though, is if a rogue is hit while he's opening a door or assembling some explosives or whatever, then it does reset the progress. You know, a little bit like opening a chest in an MMO where you kind of want to not be interfered with while you're doing it. I mean, personally, when I'm picking locks in real life, if someone hits me in the face with a fireball, it really disrupts the flow. And so, when you have a group playing with you, Chris. it's more people to help distract um, the guards away from the rogues so they can focus on their job. Do you spend a lot of time lockpicking, Myra? <laughs> Do you want a story? Okay. Do it! Do it! I love a story. <laughs> like, I, I had my magic cards locked away, and I managed to misplace the key, and so I relied on my wife to pick the lock, and that happened multiple times. <laughs> to the point where I would frustratingly yell her name, she'd come down with the lockpicks and sort that out. <laughs> She Jesus that Christ! But she did this so quickly and looked so patronizing about it. Man <laughs> child! Yo, re well, that's a, that's a relatable. Yeah, that's relatable. Awesome. <laughs> you might need to save a backup key somewhere, Chris. Lockpicking's fun, though. I've done a little bit of uh, practice lockpicking. <laughs> nice. Um, I, I also love how you mentioned when you're playing a party in this, uh, your friends can effectively either help you or. And take your loot and I was, it got me thinking like in heist movies a big part of it is uh often some sort of betrayal <laughs> some sort of like twist in the plot so I like that uh group play potentially introduces that uh twist or betrayal True. Um, has of exile, denying items from other people that they deserve <laughs> Stop you're finally bringing Jack. back a little Stop bit of that kind of like uh really really aggro early days path of exile concept of like free-for-all looting and things like that in a way <laughs> There's still PK people at the bandit encounters, I think, you know, like we've got yeah. a bit of that. Yep, I uh, did a little bit of that recently with Amy when <laughs> we go up leveling. What? Um, I was wondering, uh, well, you probably, I don't even know if I want to ask, but is there going to be any twists in the tales in the story here for a price? You're going to have to play it and see. And the best part <laughs> about me saying that with a straight Bosses. face is I have not read the heist story. I'm ah. hopeful content and that means i do not know myself whether there are any twists in the story and i'm not yeah. meaning to stick around for there being any because they might not have made any but that's the thing we'll find out on release date right what the, fuck? the twist could be that there's no twist <laughs> even knowing there's a twist is a spoiler so ask about bosses ask if there's any there bosses characters and things going on so i'm excited to see what happens bosses. yeah 13 characters and uh that's a lot because like I, I figured there'd be like four like here's your luck picking here's your demolition here's the big dude who charges through the wall um but that's a that's a lot of people is there like a lot of overlap between what they do or they all kind of have something unique going on there's a little bit of overlap with the skills and part of this is that for any skill there's going to be someone who's really good at it but then there are going to be people who are okay at it to start with who you can train up who have other benefits of what they do like oh. everyone's got a personality and they cause there to be different side effects as well you know there's people that are better at stealthiness and so on and so you're going to want to pick your rogues based on your overall goal and what equipment you're giving them you know your play style and this may mean that if there's a lockpicking mission maybe the best thing to do is not just bring the good lockpick but to bring a bad lockpick and get them good at it so that they can then go on the more complicated one later how well, important is it to like cool. level up these uh friendos you'll find contracts that have higher and higher level requirements for the stuff so if you've been completely neglecting leveling up the right people and being really dumb about it then you'll have some contracts you won't be able to run until you've gone and fixed the problem but it's not a, it's not a significant issue i mean typically you will gradually see the levels increase and think oh i need to keep on top ah. of this but it's not it's not that difficult i mean it's mm. far less dangerous than the resistances in dell for example where if you ignore that for a while you just get pasted <laughs> yeah indeed um i also saw that you can you can gear them as well uh how important is the gearing or is it kind of like more minor stuff little benefits and things like that, that it's not i mean it's not critical to micromanage the gear of your rogues but you certainly want to put items on when you can do they all have various benefits that will help you in different ways right like there's more damage there's better stealth level management there's more experience gain for their skills there's economic benefits with the amount of markers that the gang is taking and so on and so 
you will benefit regardless of what equipment is on there. It's just that if you have a specific goal, like being quiet or um, leveling up stuff, you're probably going to want to tailor the equipment to that. Basically, if you're a noob, right. you and, can just uh, spurg out. This is, I mean, very obvious. So that's you, miss in saying you don't need quite reminiscent of hirelings or mercs in, uh, you know, for example, in Diablo 2, uh, which is something people, well, some people are very excited about the concept of. Is this a little bit of an experiment in future potential of the idea of hirelings in PoE? Yeah, we've wanted to do oh. hirelings for a long time. The concern oh. just is if we add them to the game as a thing which you can take around with you, then we've got double the number of characters in every area. You know, if you're playing in a party and everyone's got a mercenary with you doing skills and so on, Fuck it. it's going to hit performance, it's going to make it. gameplay complicated, it's going to be a lot it. on the screen, it's going to affect balance, do it. it's going to affect everything. And also maybe, maybe the game's not fun to have a hireling with you the entire time. It's fucking trash. And so heist is a great opportunity for, in an appropriate context, to have characters with you which um, are implicitly limited in what they can do, but at the same time performing actions that are useful, experimenting with equipment, experimenting with different skills they have, and basically seeing how it goes. And if it's amazing and everyone loves it, then we can look at widening it up in the future. So think of it as like test part one for how mercenaries work in Path of Exile. And the nice thing about it is it fits perfectly with the theme of heists. So afterwards, if we say, well, that was heist only for various reasons, it, it will make sense that they're only having, you only have rogues in the heist encounters themselves. They're, not something that players are going to expect to have through that, throughout the entire game because your, you know, demolition requirements are more limited when you're doing other content. Yeah, I like the other idea that they have specific niche roles that aren't necessarily core gameplay stuff, so they don't kind of get in the way of the core gameplay, which is you know combat. It's but terrible. Rather, yeah. like, you know, here's ways of unlocking extra rooms or getting extra chests or finding different escape routes and things like that. I do. I am curious to see like whether that concept could transfer over to the core game in some capacity where they would be doing some other thing that isn't like core combat but yeah, uh, I guess we'll find out based on the feedback mercs when you're finding a boss in the future. and yeah, the fucking boss targets your merc <laughs> and then you <laughs> fucking die <laughs> it's trash. They look pretty uh they look pretty hands free in this from the footage like you don't have to micro them too much you just click a button to tell them to yeah, lock the door hard. It's not a micromanagement league, right? Like the, the usual experience is you get a contract, you run the contract, the rogue follows you, you go through and steal some stuff and get out. Like there's little stuff to click on, um, apart from the monsters to kill them. The grand heists, of course, require a bit more planning, but you're not doing those particularly often. And so you will have to make some choices there about what you're going to be, um, you know, focusing your reveals on. But um, a lot of it is that we like to make it so that the micromanagement is kind of there for people who want to i use the word role play but people who want to really get into it like with heist uh, with with harvest you can make your garden significantly more complicated or more pretty or whatever but um you know a lot of it just came down to building a garden where things are connected and we certainly don't have a crazy set of rules to the extent that leaked it i mean this one is a lot more at face value like we want it to be immersive and micromanagement breaks immersion so there's certainly a lot less micromanagement Aww. than people are fearing N wonderful uh you're uh particularly passionate about items from every time i've spoken to in the past it's one of your like core passions which is fundamental in action rpgs in my opinion um in this expansion you're uh taking a hundred of the uniques the sacrosanct unchangeable unique items and uh making dodgy knockoffs of them um <laughs> well, seems, the seems kind of crazy Apologies, you know <laughs> <laughs> well, that's tell pompous. me a little bit about how that's that pompous. idea came that's about and what you think it means. So, there are a couple of benefits to this. The first one is that these uniques are immediately recognizable to the community, right? Like it's something our, our designers like to take something which has a nostalgic value and to kind of do a twist on it. Like how Fated Uniques had the upgraded version. The replica uniques here are kind of an alternate view. It's kind of almost like the, uh, the Planar Chaos Magic the Gathering set from a while ago. It's like you know, how would this work if it was reinterpreted in a slightly different way? What other types of builds could be opened up with one small tweak? And so it plays on the nostalgia of the original items and it also defies expectations in some ways because you have unique items that were once very powerful, which due to the replication process have had their important thing changed. So they're a lot more niche or just less powerful. And you've got ones that were previously ignored that now do some pretty powerful stuff. And so it'll be very interesting seeing how players um, how players kind of rate these up against each other because you get them from heist rule grand heist reward rooms you have to pick one out of a set that you're given and so your immediate reaction of i'm just going to take this one picking something expensive uh, might not be the right one if you know the replication process hasn't been kind to that item and so it should be interesting to see how people select those it's gonna break the game and then the other thing is from it's a content point of view we can make 100 replica uniques in the time it takes to make five to ten normal ones if you see what i mean because in this case it's just a careful shift in one direction plus a lot of testing 
versus normal uniques that have art requirements and a lot of implementation and so on. So it means that we're adding a ton of 100%. build diversity in a space where normally we'd only be enabling five or ten new builds. Are they going to change one unique? Stuff going on here as well, including something that you talked about in the past, which is this new. It's going like, to make RNG some build that takes no damage. Two point uh, How much is that being used here? That's just going to happen. Uh, kind of like how does the system looking like it's there'll be a broken out, one that makes you take no damage on it. so this isn't using the exact Literally. um decluttering stuff that we've that, been that they on, thought of um, to reduce general white drops and path of x and so really? it is using similar techniques though so basically the goal here is that we're presenting to players um good rare items that have enchantments or good rare items that have other properties um from the display cabinets and grand heists so that because it would be underwhelming for you to play through a heist and the items got a good enchantment but terrible other mods you know why did they put that in the secure facility and so um, this is the approaches we're using here are similar to the ones from certain fossils that guarantee good mods. I think Sanctified Fossil might be one of those. And so um, it's an experiment in saying what happens if we have this concept of good rares. And of course, the decluttering projects that we've talked about takes that to an extreme where basically your um, item quantity starts to turn into better items. And so instead of having, you know, at the end of the level, there's like 300 rares on the ground and a sea of other items, instead you have fewer actual like good it. rares for you I to like look it. at where they're better and better if like you um, would have found more rares normally. And so there's a big discussion there, but and the intention of that project basically is to reduce the um, amount of items that you have to sift through so we kind of give you the good ones you would have kept and this is definitely the same in spirit even if the approaches are a little bit different he's saying that we're in a beta mm, test really we're going to be like beta testing for them of that, for poe2 uh, bringing back maybe in heist. the excitement of looking at rares on the ground a little bit more in this case in heist containers or <laughs> Display that's class. what he's saying chat we're gonna be beta testing <laughs> um changing gears a little bit talking about uh skills um <laughs> i'm personally curious about the black hole skill um that's like something i would expect to ne never really see in path of exile is something that like sucks enemies up and m like groups them up like that is like oh i like, oh i feel that's dangerous right on, from a balance perspective they can really watch out the entire screen well, what Ziggy. the skills team have been trying to do here is make position really matter in combat they want it so that you have to choose where to throw that void sphere down where to put your flame walls down and so on so that you have you know pros and cons to the various locations now of course doing that in combat at a fast pace is going to be a skill players need to learn but that's where you know skilled combat is always good for a game and it has tangential benefits of really uh, you know encouraging self-casting to some extent while it doesn't take away the ability you can trigger void spheres if you want to but being able to place one in the location to do the most damage is of course a lot better use of resources and so it's kind of trying to give advantages to people who still want to play the game the old-fashioned way by clicking on monsters as opposed to programming a complicated computer of support gems i'm gonna just program yeah, I'm gonna uh, trigger mine I, i'm pretty excited about that like positioning based gameplay so we also saw like the firewall and things like that where shooting projectiles through it means like you got to position it and yourself and the enemies correctly so there's a lot more going on there um in some ways part of it is really fast paced though is like how difficult do you think is you that to cool off in a game like Pee-wee? um i think that builds that want to clear screens at the moment the so probably care less about where you're placing it but that's where we're going to encourage people to have more fun placing stuff in the right places and feeling satisfied about it and just because there are parts of Path of Exile that are very fast placed for certain characters on certain builds doesn't mean we shouldn't try to make it better for other characters if we can do. And Absolutely. So, Super agree with that. Yeah, we it's... Have, we're working towards a... Melee? I mean, I don't want to say we're slowing the pace of the game down because that does ruin a lot of the fun of this action-packed combat, but we're trying to provide other options that require more thought and patience that are powerful as well so the people who don't want to play at a breakneck speed you know, are able to appreciate the game and still be powerful. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, effectively, you can make some content where it's more relevant. Like, here's the harder, slower content. Like, that's why I really love boss fights in particular, because that's you go from, like, zoom zooms and having fun with that to here's another different type of content where you slow it down and things get a lot more serious all of a sudden. That changing pace, I think, is something where you can give room for a lot of these different ideas and concepts to flourish, potentially. Yeah, completely agree. It also seemed very PoE too, this idea of things like Black Hole and Wall of Fire and stuff like that as well. Like more skills that you can link up and have extra skill slots for and stuff like that. Yeah, the, the skills team are fully aware of the, you know, impending Path of Exile 2 in the future and making sure that we create stuff that's fully compatible with the way that that game is played. Awesome. Um, there's a little bit of a question about... I think we'll, we'll skip over to some of the uh, viewer questions now because I've still got a couple, but uh, <laughs> I've kept, already kept you for like half an hour and I haven't asked any viewer questions yet. So uh, one of the top asked questions has been tab affinities, which uh, for those of you not aware is this auto sorting tab so feature good. that uh, Chris has talked Terraria. about in the past. Tab affinities. It's Terraria. Mm -hmm. 
So you want to know where it's up to? Yes, um, please. So we have the server side part of this um, implemented and currently not finished testing. So the client side uh. part hasn't been done, partly because um, there's a lot of work fixing finishing client stuff for Heist. Now, Just fix it. That's looking promising. Um, it's entirely possible that it will be ready in the coming weeks, but that really depends on us knowing that it's safe. And anything that involves large amounts of items, particularly stash tabs, we don't want to get wrong. Like, we have to make sure it's done well, because if we accidentally deploy it and it, you know, destroys Duplicate. a billion tabs of items, that's yeah. probably a bad thing. And so we're being careful with it, and we're making sure to put the, you know, the team members on this project who know how to do it the best, and that does mean that things are going a bit slowly with it. So I don't know that it will be ready for 312 release day, but it's certainly on the horizon very soon, and there are people actively working on it. So, you know, it'll be released as soon as we're confident it's ready, and definitely not a day before that. I can't imagine the stress that if like, be they one rolls around and people are like, I tab affinity to all my items and they got to, and they're just deleted. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yep, that would be pretty stressful, I can imagine. Uh, needing to get that right, but it is a very exciting feature that's going to improve our lives a lot. I'm uh, Yo, impressed chat, to hear come that on. potentially is something that could be coming sooner rather than later than I expected it might still be illegal to away. Soon it's just that practically we're not going to rush it. We want to make sure it's done correctly. Ban the high high with tab folders and Ban the high of, um, QOL stuff that we've been Ban talking it. about. Um, I'm going to, I haven't pre-read these questions. So I'm just going to read it off the cuff. Uh, how do you get contracts to begin with? Uh, are they found in a box on the ground or off of monsters or something else? Um, how, how do you get engaged with this content? I guess is the main question here. So as you play through Path of Exile, um, you will find contracts and markers in regular world areas of regular monsters. Now, in the early part of the game, you'll also find specific, I can't remember the name, maybe it's Heist Cache or something like that, where you find um, contracts and markers in one location. So like you were looking for your seed pod, in the early part of the game, you can find your heist pod and get your, um, you know, and get your heist stuff that way. But over time, that becomes just a general drop from monsters. And of course, the league becomes somewhat self-sustaining because if you're good at heists, you'll steal quite a lot of markers from them. And that means you'll be able to do more stuff with the following ones. Okay. Uh, the new enchanted weapons and armors will only drop from heists or grand heists. And uh, will they not be able to be crafted or are they items that you can engage with? This is a question here. I know the answers to these ones, but uh, go ahead. Yeah. The, the enchanted weapon and body armors drop from grand heists in the uh, reward rooms there, and the items are fully craftable, right? You can take one of those and go on a crazy crafting project and make the best weapon the game has ever seen. And there are rumors of um, there being a currency item that allows you to transfer enchantments between oh. items, or at least weapon and body armor enchantments. And oh. that is something we are strongly considering, have not committed to yet, and will think about because obviously it has very large crafting implications. That's OP. Um, Put it on the best You may see pace. something like that, so don't be too worried about it being stuck on that particular item unless we decide not to do it, in which case that will have been the right decision. So we'll uh, let you know. Awesome stuff. <laughs> um, is this really it. seem like the sort of content that would support bosses? Um, yeah, but is bosses. there kind of like any sort of like bossing content or Please. larger fights? I did see in the trailer some sort of gigantic robot chasing people around, so. Boss. Yeah. Um, I think the players should wait and see what there is in terms of that stuff when they play the league. Um, there's no boss stuff that is absolutely mandatory for you to understand for your planning of the heist. So any nice stuff that you run into that you find on the day will be a cool surprise. And I would rather leave it like that. What does that mean, you grass? Uh, can fated, what a, can what? fated upgrade a replica? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> wow, didn't even think of that. Yeah, it's a different item. I mean, we could always add prophecies for those in the future, but currently it's a different unique. Yeah, do you see like she said there uh, was a boss. uniques kind of maybe sticking around a little bit? I feel like uh, it makes sense here, but could be confusing in the future. I don't know. Well, let's see what the feedback is like on them. Um, you know, it's there are a number of ways that we can do alternate uniques in the game, and um, you know, it's I can't promise heist sticks around because we haven't you know had people play it yet and give us feedback. But um, you know, it's a league that's looking pretty promising, so it's entirely possible that some some or all of it sticks around, and you can get replica uniques from heists in the future in standard. Yeah, I imagine if there's like a concept that's explored in a replica unique, it could always be made into a another unique or something else in the future as well, like a, a new skill or something like that. Um, a lot of chat has been asking about things like quarry and harbour bridge farming. It's always like a hot topic as to how much the league will involve it or promote it. Uh, oh, sure. something you just have to consider now. I'm just going to get <laughs> the answers. Do you have any comments about? If they nerfed that, things? then they just go down to the they just default one down. And they go, 
Yeah, fair enough. Mark points out that because there's no place to run to in the quarry to get one of these, it just drops from monsters. You know, you can get them from maps, you can get them from the quarry. Whatever you want to do to kill monsters will get you these. You pretty much would have to full clear the quarry if you want to be, you know, getting maximum number of contracts from it. Hooray. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it sounds like mapping is going to be a lot better then because you're just going to get a lot more monsters to kill to get them to drop yeah. initially. Makes, uh, makes a lot of sense. Um, who were we stealing from? I couldn't figure that out when I was writing the video. I was like trying to write who we're stealing from. And I'm just like, experimenters? We have not given information about the storyline. And that's partly because um, we kind of want people to experience it, right? The writers have put so much text into this. There's so many characters. There's so many different things for them to discover that we've just decided like, you know, play the league, see what's happening as you play it. You know, there's a lot to explore there. And I kind of, I, I worry that I'm not doing it justice <laughs> if I give a one yes, no summary idea, of the dude. story when I'm, you know, presenting it on announcement day like this. So I would much rather that um, people experience it with its full voice actor glory in game. Oh! Well, some stuff. I yeah, like voice acting. Yeah, there's a lot of different characters and stuff here. There's a lot of voice acting. Was that difficult to arrange? Like, given lockdown and things like that? A living nightmare. <laughs> Okay. Well, thank you for getting so much voice acting in. I always really enjoy the new character. I hope that big guy's and, EU. Like, goofy lines. I hope he's like EU. <laughs> like Longstock and Two Smoke and Barrels guy, EU guy. Again, right? There's still two and a half weeks to go and we just got out of lockdown, so there's a bit to go. <laughs> okay, everybody, come on, get in. Get in and say your lines. Uh, I, I look forward to uh, hearing some of it. Like you know said, what I'm talking about, right? That big guy. In the past, and all that. He's like, <laughs> so, you fucking want me? It looks like there's you some pretty big, pretty big characters here, and I don't just mean that in terms of just what's right his name, Treb or Teb. It's a desert <laughs> eagle. <laughs> uh, guy 22 right caliber. Now, oh. he's, he's my favorite lock picking expert, by the way. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? Um, um, uh, some people are asking about you. Vulcan. Uh, how is its development going? Because it seems like there's been kind of like, for some people, it d depends on the person, it seems, as to how well it's going. But some people had really good performance and then it's gone down a little bit as changes have been made. How, where are we at with that, do you know? There's a large technical patch coming out before Heist's release. Um, I'm actually writing a news post oh. about this for us to you know, discuss it um, in the coming days. But basically, one RTX. of the things that the technical patch does is significant engine bug performance improvements. RTX. And so our goal is to release this before Heist so that people can try it out. I mean, it will, it will work. It'll be fine. But we just want to validate that rather than more problems on launch day. And so there's a bunch of other tech changes that are coming to Path of Excel at the same time. And we'd like to get that disassociated from launch day so that people can just make sure it works well and you know get the download out of the way and that kind of stuff beforehand. Um, and so that has, I think, hundreds of small tweaks to Vulcan. Um, Vulcan and up. as it stands at the moment, it's working better than ever in this, um, you know, in this new update. There are various weird driver slash graphics card slash hardware combinations that aren't great with Vulcan, and we're looking into whether we're going to be whitelisting or blacklisting drivers or automatically detecting and various other bits and pieces. Um, but you know, it's getting, it's going to get to the point where people that still have a bad Vulcan experience are cases that are outside of our control that we have to work with the graphics card vendors, um, or, you know, make the players aware that a potential combo might work better with DirectX. Fantastic stuff. I'm always, get in uh, a video, bro. Just get in a video. 3080 Ti. Get out to more people and enjoying it even more. Um, a lot of people have been asking about a replica headhunter. <laughs> you don't have to reveal that if you don't want. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, sorry, cutting. Um, <laughs> what? That one. Except keep an eye on Vex's teasers. <laughs> yeah, so I'm with like a hundred replica uniques and nine hundred gems, and then uh, must Del be like 10 delete the eight different alternate bases and stuff like that. I imagine uh, Bex is very, very excited about this expansion. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of stuff to show off to the community, which we're looking forward to. And it also means, which is cool, that there'll be lots of stuff which we haven't managed to show off by release that people will get to discover as they play through. So we'll have lots of single image posts to Reddit in the first few days. Oh, God. Awesome. So keep your eyes peeled, folks. Plenty of cool stuff. That kind of sounds poggers, actually. Um, it, like chat like give me shit. That has been your personal favorite kind of thing that you've seen that a dev has shown you for this uh, that you're really looking forward to people seeing as well? I I enjoy the going on a heist aspect of this league and there's various <laughs> stuff that happens like there'll be people who are planning a heist and they'll look at the blueprints and work out where the escape rooms are the escape routes are and then completely forget that when actually playing you know like there's a there's quite a lot of like the onus is on you to actually understand the heist that you're doing and if that means looking at them out beforehand and thinking hmm I have to go out through the auditorium and blah 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 oh, there's God. kind of a cool realism to that 
and it's obviously totally fine to just barge around killing the monsters like normal but if okay. you really want to finesse the uh you know actually taking the escape routes and stuff like that, that you've planned then it requires actually like studying your plan beforehand and i enjoy that because it's kind of how i imagine heist is going down in real life you so got a full clear that's of the mobs cool chris the team we've been finding about this league that the the, the process of playing it matches what it would be like in real life to do this kind of stuff which is highly <laughs> illegal of course so it's good we can do it <laughs> i like how this is actually the probably the least criminal thing we've ever done in our path of exile exile career <laughs> from murdering gods to countless other individuals and various other crimes just stealing some stuff doesn't really seem that bad in we're comparison. killing everyone on the way do yeah. we kill like we're also killing all <laughs> well, the guards this, uh, very good so <laughs> like Thank you very much for uh, staying more time than originally budgeted for to answer some extra questions. Questions and for watching. I, I appreciate it. Thank you very much for your time and uh, have a good rest of your day. Enjoy everyone's reactions, and uh, we're gonna go take a look at some more of the stuff. So thank you very much. You. All right. See you later. See you later, Chris. Bye. All right, folks. It's pretty good. Thank you very much to Chris and Bex and everything for arranging the uh, little spoilers and stuff like that. Let me go ahead and get rid of this thing. Where is it? Spoiling cap. I wanted to pause so many points there. You have no idea how hard that was for me to like. I just like, dude. I, I it's the worst thing about watching live streams is you can't pause it to say stuff. So many points I I needed to hit on there, but I just couldn't. And now now because I'm retarded, I've just forgotten all those points. I've forgotten all the points, and so now I can't hit on those points because I would have just paused like 500 times, dude. It critiqued so many things. It would have been nuts. Yo, and also, I've listened. Yo, Brox is in chat. Yo, what's up, Brox? How you doing, brother? Um, Bex posted a new GM to Discord. This is bullshit, right? Yeah, I knew it was. I know it was bullshit. That's why I didn't open on the main screen. Get fucked. Get fucked. Yeah, Brox is in chat. Pog is in the chat, boys. Okay. So, oh, the, oh, yeah, dude, you were, the, what? You were telling me she was uh, 12 years old, bro? Okay, I don't think she's 12 years old. Okay. Specialized items uh, can be equipped to rogues to make them stealthier, deadlier, and more adept at their roles. Like any other part of XL items, rogue, equi uh, rogue equipment can be crafted with currency items. A well-equipped crew with a great, uh, is a great asset. Looks like she's got some great assets, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I just joke. I'm just fucking. I'm dude. I'm such a degenerate incel. What am I even saying? Uh, we're not taking the, the most difficult heists. Okay, what's this? Golden brooch. Uh, eight percent job XP gain. Okay. Okay. I'm like fifty. I know, dude. I'm like fifty. She's not even wearing shoes. She's not even wearing shoes. Why isn't she wearing shoes? What's going on here? She just got her feet out, man. Sulfur blowtorch. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. Enforcer standard sharpening stone. 37% increased melee damage. Players and their minions regenerate 1%. What? Wait, you can get buffs for your own guy? Okay. The ring's cut reduced by 14%, 11% increased time before lockdown. Oh, that's pretty nice. 8% reduced hiring fee. Hopefully they can use some of this interface to, to work on the Animate Guardian interface, actually. Like, hopefully they soon we'll have, like, a window where we can, like, drag and drop items onto our Animate Guardian and see stats, and we can actually customize their abilities. Soon, my brothers. Soon. Plan a grand heist. The ultimate goal of the thief is to pull off a grand heist. This requires access to blueprints that show where the vaults are located inside sprawling facilities. These elaborate jobs require masterful planning, purchasing additional intel about the facility, and hiring multiple rogues to assist with their many obstacles. This, so, okay, so the standard heist, you pick one guy, right? And then the, what, the, the big dick height, you pick, like, three dudes. Basically. And hiring multiple workers is the This planning can result in a huge payoff as each vault has its own exclusive rewards. Uh, okay. Kuma. Who's a Kuma? 
Yeah, Brox is in chat. Pog is in the chat, boys. Okay. Why did you so? So. Hey, why are you like? <laughs> so. I just boom. What is that? <laughs> Yo, I just said I got excited because that was the mercenary that I wanted to hire. I got excited because that's that's uh that's the one I want to. What is it? I'm trying to read. Why are you guys spamming me clips? Um, I just read this line. Blip, blip, blip. You have no intelligence. Blip, 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 blip. Oh, Queen, blip, blip. Actum, butcher, axe, blip, 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 What if they made an item? No, I got, I'm, no, I was gonna say some real mean shit. I need to stop, dude. Okay, look at the picture here. So that's the extraction point, but it's not connected to anything. I'm confused. Wait, what? So this, what? This ladder goes to that room and that ladder also goes to that room. But wait, why was if you go for the ladder at the extraction point? What? Escape, true, but wait, where do you enter? Like, how do you, how do you get from this area to that area? Because I don't see a way to get from that area to that area, chat. I'm going to be honest with you here. I'm kind of confused. How can this confuse you? What, what do you mean how can this confuse you? What are you, what are you saying? Oh, I'm going to go, okay. So, like, what? Where, where, how do you get from this area to that area? There's a ladder. Yeah, the ladder goes to the extraction point. Can you not see the line? Mm. Mm. I don't know about this one, dude. I, I'm not, I don't know about this one, chant. Thieves trinkets, uh, one exclusive, uh, one of the exclusive rewards you'll be able to steal from the Grand Heist are trinkets, which go on their own Wait, which go on their own new equipment slot. These magical items influence what rewards you will find from future heist runs. Some of their modifiers affect the items dropped by enemies and chests, while others modify the rewards you could obtain from a high special rewards chest. Okay. 10 percent chance uh, for items to drop in corrupted heists. Well, items to drop corrupted in heists. 23% increased rarity of items in heists. Okay. 40% chance for double divination cards from heists. You know, like, cute dog and shit is, like, reading this with, like, a massive fucking erection right now. Like, all little trade league, all little trade league cucks are just like, ah! Ah! Like, they're just, like, well, they're just thinking about, look, the, the, the trinkets are gonna have to, like, min-maxing their, uh, their, uh, their loot drops. I mean, it's still gonna be good for, tr it's, it's gonna be good. Do you know what it's gonna be good for? It's gonna be good for SSF in the respect that, like, maybe there's ones that can, like, be like, oh, Portal Scrolls now drop us transmutes. And then you just get a fuck ton of transmutes. You know what I'm saying? That'd be pretty tight. That'd be pretty tight. We, why are you guys question marking? Literally read this. 5% chance for Regal Orbs to drop as Exalted Orbs instead of Heist. They can literally do that, chat. They could do the same thing. They could be like, oh, yeah. Um, you, can, you know, if there's a particular item which you want to farm. 40% increased rogues markers drop from monsters. 41% uh, for double maps from heist chests. 44% chance for double scares from heist chests. Pretty nuts. Pretty nuts. Alternate quality gems. Alternate quality gems come from grand heist reward rooms and provide uh, even more depth for ex existing skill and support gems. Each existing Path of Exile gem has up to three alternate quality versions which can grant different quality bonuses than the original gems. Some simply increase the power of the gem, while others entirely change which builds most benefit from the gem. Okay, wait, explain. Okay, so this one here gets alternate quality. But what is the alternate quality? Lightning damage? 
Supporter's kill save, a base mana cost of equal to 6% of armor resistance. Um, the cold damage? Wait. What? What? Supporter skills gain added cold damage equals to up to 39% mana cost if mana cost is not higher than the maximum you can spend. So it's literally giving you cold dam instead of lightning dam. But then you also get the flat lightning from the gem. Okay, interesting. Cleave. Okay, this will be big. This will be big. Cleave quality. Five life gain for each enemy hit by your attacks. So you get 20 life gain on hit. But I mean, cleave is still cleave, dude. Like, Cleave doesn't change Cleave. Cleave is still Cleave. Like, you can get that from a watch's eye. You know, you don't need to, like, I don't know. Let me turn this down a tad. Like, I don't know. I think it's still dog shit, but okay. And it's not really game changing or anything. Hero of Agony. Oh, fuck. Okay, 7% quality. Uh, 26 chance of poison hood. Blurring skin for poison enemy. 10% of poison damage. Requires 3% chance of Uh,. Agony Crawl has 7% chance to inflict with it. Throw a flashback. <laughs> okay. Agony Crawl has a 7% chance to inflict with it on head for two seconds. I mean, at 20% chance, it doesn't really, like... I don't think that's that good. I don't think it's that good, dude. Honestly. It's two times two, it's 14 life. In. It's massive. I don't think it's massive, dude. I think it's still trash. I'll be honest, dude. I don't think that's uh Yeah. Replica, uniques, and experimented base types. Other rewards you can claim from Grand Heist are replica, unique items, and experimented base Throw types. Flashback. Dude, I'm trying to read, bro. Like, what? can you please stop? I can't open my eyes. Like, how am I going to read? Oh, Abyssus? What have they done to Abyssus, bro? What have they What have they done to Abyssus? Wait, this Replica Sora of the Divine Silver Flask? Wait, what the fuck? Increased duration. Eldritch Battery during Flask Effect. Life recovery from flasks also applies to Energy Shield during the Flask Effect. What the fuck? What the fuck? I mean, that seems pretty fucking good. So you can, like, you can pot. You can pop with this bitch. It's got, th you can three uses. 5.8 second duration. That's, that's nuts. If you're an ES cuck. Okay. Uh, replica lionized paws. Boots. So this one, uh, oh, so this one choose toxic rain instead of rain of arrows. That seems like something like, uh, uh race QT would use. Like, it's a real beta ability, right? It's a really kind of, like, a masculine ability. Like, I feel like that's like a, that's maybe like a raise QT or like a Ziz move, like a toxic rain. They all seem to, to, to gravitate towards these kind Throw of uh, more beta uh, play styles of using chaos damage. You know, so, I mean, I probably, uh, I mean, I probably just prefer the default version, uh, you know, because I don't, I don't like to use poison, uh, you know, like ranged poison abilities. Okay, Replica Abyssus. Here we go, boys. Here we go. 22 with little tributes. Fire damage. Cold. What? What the fuck? An elemental Abyssus? Fire damage to attacks. Cold damage to attacks. Lightning damage to attacks. Are we going to have to make an Inquisitor crit build? Oh my god. Increase 50% increase elemental damage taken. Well, do you know what's good, though? You can actually get really good elemental damage reduction if you're using that one setup. Um, using that one setup uh, where you just make elemental damage, like, basically non-damage. Non, non I mean, dude, that's a lot of flat. Do you understand how insane that would be on, like, an Inquisitor? Holy shit, could you imagine, dude, could you imagine, like, an Ice Crash Crit Inquisitor with this bitch on? Or even a, oh yeah oh dude void forge ah 
I mean, you don't really need a Void Forge, but like, you know, you could do a Void Forge if you wanted to, but I mean, fuck. This is a, it, yeah, it has to be attacks though. It's flat damage or attacks. Okay, that's an Elemental Abyssus. What the fuck? That's pretty nuts. That's huge. Like, that's an entirely u unique at this point. Right? It's like you've got the physical abyssus and you've got the elemental abyssus. It's like a, it's like a whole new flavor of abyssus. I like it. I mean, it's not very... It's not super good for... Throw a flashback! Bro, come, bro, please. Just... I'm trying to read patch notes and you're flashbanging me, bro. Like... Skull Barrage. This one's just got flat... So this one says flat fire. Throw a flashback! I don't, yep, yeah, yeah, there it is. Just a little bit delayed sometimes. It's fucking dangerous. Weapon and body Throw armor. Throw flashback. Bro! Stop! The final new reward available from the Grand Heist is selection. Seriously, bro? Seriously, bro? You fucking flashbanging me somehow? Throw flashback. It's just getting. I'm stun locked. I go. I'm, I'm perma stunned. It's, it's all the P. It's all the PoE cucks haven't been in stream for ages, and they're like the the. Throwing flashback. Ah! The final reward is available from the Grand Heist is a list of weapons, buddy. I'm trying flashback. to drive. These are enchantments uh, that come uh, on unnaturally no. powerful rare items, and the effect. Of these are these enchantments come on unnaturally powerful rare items, and the effect of the magnitude of the modifiers on these items. Uh, some of these enchantments are so powerful that they involve substantial drawbacks. So basic, basically, chat. Basically. They're, they're, they're implementing Poe two system to to like reduce the amount of loot clutter, and they're basically letting us beta test uh, their new system, which is pretty poggers, right? So it rolls an item like fifty times, so you get like a crazy good roll. So like, let's see, yeah, it got like really good life, got a res, and then it's also got the all sockets are linked, life modifiers. Wait, so if you get all sockets are linked, and it's not corrupted. You can literally just use a jewelry boy on this. You can literally just use a jewelry boy on this. Here, we're probably ruining the game with this leak. I like how you're trying to like. Uh, I like how you're trying to. No shit. Yeah. So basically, chat, you get a six link. If you have this mod, you just jewelry boy it, and then bang, you've got a six link, which is going to be absolutely insane. I don't, even, I don't know how rare that's going to be, but yeah. Now, what you would do though, let's be honest here, if you can move this enchant, you would you would. Get a but you would click a button, put this onto a an item, and then you would then you would chuck this on like an influence astral plate, right? That's what you would do, and then that way, and then you just use Julie Boys, bang, six link. Wait, how the fuck are they gonna let us move the enchantment whenever the, the linking is permanent? Cause you could just move it. So, oh, the, oh, yeah, 12 years old, bro. Oh, yeah, dude. Oh. So, oh, the, oh, yeah, 12 years old, bro. Oh, yeah, dude. Oh. Can you stop? Can you stop? Like, can you just. Holy fuck, my ass, dude. Can you imagine if, because Chris was saying that they're, they're contemplating letting us move these enchants with items? I mean, clearly, there'll have to be a massive cost. If they let us move this enchantment, like, think about how busted that's going to be. It would have to destroy the item you're taking it off. Like, that's the only thing it could do. It would have to destroy the item you're currently taking it off. Otherwise, this is going to be completely nuts because you just print six links, right? Like, <laughs> just get really good base types and then just six link them and then check, move it. Like, I mean, it'd be nuts. Or just remove links. Well, it, we don't know. Maybe that could happen. Maybe it could fuck with the links every time you move. I mean, it's kind of it's kind of spaghetti coding, though, right? Like, I mean, oh yeah, 
because of this one mod that we can gingerly roll, uh, yeah, whenever you remove one of these enchants, it just fucks all your links up. Like that, I don't know if they would want that, because what if I've got a good six link? And I'm like, yeah, I want to just move this enchant off. Use your brain. I don't want to do it. It will be rare in six and property. Yeah, no. So what will happen is, I mean, depending on how the rarity of the item, if it's because they might not be rare. Like it might, you, they're just toying with the idea. Like how. I think the way it'll work is if they do allow it, it'll just destroy the item that you're taking the enchant off. That's my. That's what I think. Well, they'll do. That's the most eloquent uh, solution. Or it's just giga rare, which is dog shit. Because then I never get in solo cell found ever, and then I just get fucked basically because I'm an SSF gamer, which is bullshit. It's bullshit. That's 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 an atrocity. It's another crime against SSF gamers around the world. Two hundred percent increase attribute requirements. Physical modifiers have fifteen percent increase effect. That's very good. Obviously, that's insane. Um, it's getting 600 strength. Dude, I get 600 strength without even trying. Like, that's that's a joke. Oppressive curses. We've added new curse-related skills and new curse support gem. The new Doom mechanic causes a self-cast curse to increase in intensity until uh, it expires. This works well in conjunction with the impending Doom support, which causes all uh, an explosion of cast damage when a linked curse ends. Curses have also uh, received a new look. Many curses are now classified as hexes and now use the doom mechanics. Self-cast hexes build up doom the longer they're active, increasing their effect. Impending doom support and doom blast. Doom blast? Impending doom trick is doom blast. When the supported hex on an enemy expires, causing a... a an explosion of cast damage based on the level of doom that activate, uh, accumulated while the hex was active. But wait, what happens if you like doom? What if you what if you do like two curses, uh, bane, impending doom, doom blast, uh, and then fucking whatever the other abilities that gives you doom stacks? Like, what happens then? Do you just press one button and then just instantly dis fucking doom blasts? Boom. Boom! Boom! Like, like what? what um, uh, yeah. Sounds kind of strong. Sounds pretty Sounds pretty decent. Punishment. We've reworked the punishment skills so that it now causes enemies to take increased damage while they're on low life and explode with overkill damage. What? Wait, does that destroy the corpse? Are you telling me that you're getting you're giving us full like free corpse deletion permanently? Like, are they? Wait, are they? Are, wait, what? Does that mean I can get Giga Slayer Leech from Overkill again as well? Like, uh, that seems OP. Hmm. Punishment. I like it. Steal. Punishment OP, OP. Uh, overkill explosions. That means there'll never be a trash mob left over, right? Like there won't be like one. Like I mean, depending. Uh, maybe, maybe destroys. Uh, des destroys corpses. Um, steel gamer. I might become a steel gamer. Again, with the new with the new steel stuff. Sharpened steel skills. Here they are, boys. Here they are. We've revamped steel skills by introducing shards. Deadly blade fragments that hover near your character. The call of the the steel skill is available whenever you have a steel skill equipped. It bursts shards from the ground, providing more ammunition for steel projectiles and causes existing shards to explode out of empowered enemies. What? So they, if they're impaled, then the shards fly out of the impaled mobs. So you press a button. You press a button. Wait. You press a button, and all your shards go boom in an area, and all of the shards in enemies go boom as well. Kind of does sound like Impaled DH, actually. It kind of sounds similar. Like, you like just charge up some shit and you press a button and it does a bunch of burst damage. We've also added one new steel skill and we're both launching and shattering steel. Launching steel. Consume steel shards. 
by thrusting an axe or sword forward to create a, a group of impaling projectiles in the air which shoots projectiles forward one after the other. Boy, how do you... So it bursts shards from the ground running... So wait, you have to impale someone to, and you'll get more... Sh so the more you've impaled a cunt, the more ammunition you'll get whenever you press the button. So it's simultaneously giving you ammo for your ability as well as it's doing damage. Read the skills. Well, I'm trying to work out... So Because I'm trying to work out ammunition. Chat, do you understand? So wait, does that mean it doesn't scale well? Because you're, ba you, you, you're, you're basing your build around a cooldown. You're basing your build around a cooldown. So maybe it prefers two handed weapons. But then maybe you can uh, maybe you can just get more ammunition if they impale more. Whenever you, if you can impale more mobs with faster attack speed. Very interesting. Oh, dude, the impaler support. Holy fuck. The impaler support is going to be nuts. Two-hander with an impaler support? Lens, okay. Okay. So we know what that one does. Splitting steel. Consume a steel shard to fire a single impaling projectile that splits on impact and creates an explosion of damage. The split projectiles fly at a nearby enemy at nearby enemies and create smaller explosions on impact. So you create an explosion and it splits. And then the splits fly to nearby enemies and create smaller explosions. But they don't split. So you goes it goes, you shoot it out, boom! <laughs> boom! Boom! I wonder how that. Wonder how like uh, what happens if you chain? Does it? Do you just go boom, 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 or does it go do, 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 boom, boom, boom? It pro I assume it doesn't explode multiple times, but it could. It could. Call of Steel. Call of Steel causes all impaled enemies in a large radius to release all of their spikes at once. Dealing area damage as shards burst out of them. These spikes can become steel shards, which can be used as various sources of ammunition for other steel skills. If there aren't enough impaled enemies within range, the skill generates steel shards over a short time. So that's for, like, initially when you're about to get into a boss fight. So that's what it is, right? So cool steel is what they were talking about, right? So the, the cool of steel skill is, yeah, so this is this is the ability. And you don't need it to link to anything because you just get it if you have a steel skill equipped. But you only get it if you have a steel skill equipped. Kind of makes sense because the steel skills are the only thing that uses the ammunition. But what that means is if you're playing an impale build, which isn't a steel skill, you're going to have to equip a steel skill just to benefit from cool steel to do burst AoE damage. <laughs> which is kind of weird, but okay. Interesting. Interesting. Very interesting. Hmm. Powerful spells. Alongside the introduction of six new spells uh, with reworks, discharge, and glacial cascade. Wait, what? The rework discharge? A goal with these new spells is that they are powerful in variety of character builds. Uh, they also have additional benefits when self-cast. Self-cast discharge? Blazing? What the fuck is this? Wait, what the fuck is this? Blazing Savlo? A spell releases a volley of firing mortars targeting enemies. Up close causes the mortars to land with overlapping impacts. Firing them further away causes the mortars to cover a larger area. What are you guys criticizing? Wait, what? Blazing Salvo. What? <laughs> what did I say? I don't know what I even said. Dude. I'm dyslexic. Shut the fuck up, chat. 
Creates a void sphere that pulses with physical and chaos damage, pulling all non-unique enemies. The sphere slows enemies with increasing intensity because they are to it. And sucks their corpses into the void. That seems really nice. On just that on a customer damage taken seems really fucking nice. Well, like just that on like a you know, just casting consistently, it's just a really nice way of just removing corpses and shit and just grouping shit up. Seems pretty tight. Flame wall. Create a wall of fire which deals burning damage to everything in the area. When your allies fire projectiles through the wall, they'll deal added fire damage and apply some of the wall's burning effect to the enemies. I mean, may I feel like it just they need to just rebalance the shit out of the game and just give us more, you know, I mean, they did say like some of the some of the encounters, maybe the monsters have a little more HP so you can benefit from skills like this, but it's like, bro. Right now the game is like ninety five percent like you just one shot the entire screen instantly. Right? Like if you if you level up to like level ninety five, right? Like in my opinion, the best gameplay in the game for a PUE right now is like when you're shitty undergeared. When you when your character is like shitty and undergeared and you're still gearing up. Um and then boss fights. And the rest of the game is like, yeah. I wouldn't care if like forty percent I reckon like the game could be easily fifty percent, you just run around one shotting everything. Right? Fifty percent. Maybe even 60%. Like, the majority of the game could just be running around one-shotting everything. That people, they, I think they just need more difficult content to, like, to, to benefit from using skills like this. Comes. No! What's this got to do with any... What's this got to do with anything? What the fuck even... What's that got to do with anything, bitch? And much, much more. Path of Exile Heist also introduces over 25 new... Unique items. Oh, what is that axe, bro? Can I highlight over it? I can highlight over it, dude. You fucking bitch. You fucking bitch. Let me highlight over it. 12 new dip cards, a visual re ramp to some skill effects, and much, much more. Okay, dude. Cops walk a cardinal boots. Level 20 cops walk when equipped. Okay, 25 boom speed. 40% increased damage when you've consumed a corpse recently. For each corpse nearby, regenerate 0.25% life. So get up to 3%. I mean... So what, these boots are 3% regen, 40% damage, 25% movement speed, 37 ES, and then... You spawn a corpse. I mean, it's so easy to get corpses. So easy to get corpses. I don't know. You're like, the like VD, you don't, you already get like a bunch. Oh, I suppose maybe you could get enough corpses that you could remove desecrate out of like your links for like your spell slinger shit. Maybe it's, but it seems like it's not that. I don't know. I don't know. And to be honest, it seems really, I don't know. I feel like it's really easy to get corpses. That's what I feel like. Leveling boots, maybe? <laughs> From 55? Chains of Emancipation Chain Belt. 90 maximum energy shield. 77 maximum life. 20 cast rares. Enemies inf uh, hits inflict temporal chains on you. When you lose temporal chains, you gain... Maximum rage? Immune to curse while you have at least 25 rage? Part of Exile on Mac OS. What really think Part of Exile for Mac OS? Alongside the highest expansion, this version of uh, Part of Exile is fully integrated into the main worldwide PC realm so you can access your existing accounts and microtransactions. High support. High supporter packs. We're launching two sets of supporter packs alongside the highest uh, spell blade and equal packs. There are two prize points available for each, and they feature mass uh, masses of points, several exclusive microtransactions, a new type of character effect that charges up as you slay monsters. Oh, okay, I need to buy it now. 
I'm buying an Elgin. Charges up? Ugh, are you kidding me, bro? Charges up? As I, uh, as I, dude, are you fucking kidding me, bro? So wait, which one have I got to buy, chat? Okay, what's these, uh, what, what are we looking at for here? Themes? And then we're looking for... Fucking... Airy, Fairgraves, Forsaken Masters... Harvest... Heist! Here we go, boys. Heist! Okay. Imperial Eagle. Eagle character effect. So wait, these charge up as I play? It said? I mean... Okay! Should I, should I kill some mobs? Oh, fuck. My, should I play my keyboard? Oh, nah, dude, I can't play my keyboard. Minus sixty dollars. I mean, to be honest with you, Chad, I'm not a big fan of avian shit. I'm not a big fan of birds and shit. But like, it's got a bird vibe to it. If you're like a big bird guy who likes bird shit, like if you like if you like talons, and you like bird shit. Uh, that's pretty. You know, that's pretty neat. That's pretty neat, and it's, on top of that, it's not some ridiculous shit where you got like wings coming out your ass and right, like you know, rotating dildos flying around like circling you and shit. It's, it's, it's like this is a pretty clean transmog. Now I'm not a big bird guy, so I probably wouldn't, you know, use. It. I might use it on one character. Maybe I do like an aspect of the bird build, you know, and you know, one, maybe then. Okay, maybe spellblade though. Let's have a look here. Yeah, that guy looks like he'll fuck your ass. That one looks pretty good. That one looks pretty good. I think maybe with, I mean, the ha there's something to do with the pointed hat. I don't know if I'm a big fan of the pointed hat. But everything else about it I fucking like. Everything, even the little bull. I wonder how the ridiculous the bull gets. Let me have a look, let me have a look what it looks without the helmet. Oh shit. Uh, let me put it like that. Oh, wait, maybe there's a different helmet I can use. Like even like something like that. Oh shit, dude. Oh shit. Fuck. And they need dyes, bro. We need dyes to slightly change the color scheme of like one item. But that looks. That I mean, that looks way better. Like it's just like looks. I mean, you can see without the pointed hat, the guy looks like he's gonna fuck some dudes, right? Like that. That that's bad. That's a badass look. Like I wanted to. Why don't they give us dyes? Like they give us all this shit. Give us the ability to just like change the color schemes of some items, you know, to just uh, to make like. I just want to make that the, the helmet just a little bit more gray, I guess. It's the shape of cape. Combo with the cape as well. Mm. I like the spellblade one. The spellblade one's pretty good. No doubt, the Spellblade one's pretty good. Oh, uh, this is probably be my my league. This is probably the one I when I start the new league. Uh, whenever I play Heist, I'll probably be using something along the lines of this. You know, because it does look fucking badass. Hashtag ad. It's not an ad, bitch. It's not an ad, bitch. Eat a dick. 